¿Qué tal chicos? Bienvenidos para una entrevista para el canal, estamos con esta ronda de entrevistas previas al inicio del EC y hoy estamos, bueno, con una persona que creo que hacía mucho tiempo que teníamos ganas de tener el canal, con Promiscu, el cual le tenemos que dar las gracias porque tenemos que repetir la entrevista por problemas de audio, así que, first of all, thanks for your kindness, Promiscu, for your time, for your will to repeat that interview, because... Yeah, repeating it, yeah. Yeah, we're repeating once again. You are not the first one on repeating because I remember one with Humanoid, or last split we have to repeat for, yeah. for similar reasons, but thank you very much. First of all, yeah, uh, okay. this is something I, I, if I remember good, I, I asked you two years ago. Uh, how does it feel to be back on the list here? Because you were not on a starting spot since H2K time. Then yeah, you 2018, moved, yeah. Then you move into the G2, you win it all, but as a sub, which is something that feels like a weird situation. Then you move into yeah. the ERL uh, scene on Mouse Esports together with Jesla, which is your still your teammate in Australis. And now you're yeah. back into a roster with into a, a starting spot. How's it feel for you? Uh, I'm very happy about it. Uh, I can't really say I necessarily expected to to ever make it back to to LEC as a whole because I played there for like four or five years before, and I feel like most players don't get the chance to to play even for that long in the first place. And especially if you drop out, it it is very like hard to to make it back. So. Uh, yeah, I'm like I'm very proud of myself to have be, been able to fight my way back because that's uh, what I feel I did. Yeah. How's the environment around the team more seen as from the inside as you as you are? Because maybe from the inside the people does not well uh, as as usually happens with new rosters, people do not give them so much chances against the roster which are more uh, which have been taking more better re uh, results on the pad like G2, Fnatic, etc. But in your case, yeah. Astralis is a roster with different members who have been already on LEC, almost most of them. The only one, the, the only rookie you have is, is Zanzara. But for example, yeah. Wynight was, was on L ULCS with uh, UL, Jeskla was on was on XL, you were of course with H2K and, and G2, and you dug remains from, from Origin, which is, is the which is, a, is the new routing. How does it feel for yeah. you? Did, did, did you expect to get more respect from the rest of the press and the audience as long as the season goes on. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, if, if the results are there, I, I think it's it's you know it's on black and white. If we win games, people are gonna respect us more. But uh, I do see why people would have low expectations for a roster like ours, because it's not like we have any particular star players or someone that stands out uh, that is like promising. You know, like everyone has, except for Sansara, I guess, has been in the scene, like you said, and uh, has been on the teams. Uh, Nuketech has been on a lot of successful teams. Uh, but then it's also had a long career. So I think people in are really excited to see some new faces or see something new. Uh, and that's probably why people are like kind of uh, like negative towards our roster. Because, yeah, we don't offer like anything new except for Sansara. Uh, but to me, you can't always just keep bringing up new players. Like there is not enough talent to just always bring in something new uh, and just like keep, you know, like finding new talents. Like it's actually like a very hard league to play in LEC. It's, it's the highest level of competition in Europe. And... Rightfully so. It's uh, yeah, it's tough competition. So you have to actually be good to play in LEC. So you can't just keep getting new players every year. And I think we got a very a good a good roster, like uh, compared to what people might think or have ex as expectations. Don't think we're gonna be tenth place to put it that way, which people are like just assuming, you know. So the, yeah. as a roster as a whole, did you struggle to get some some good uh, screen partners because people might think that. As at the end of the, as as it's the beginning of the season, uh, too much teams are playing mm, with each other, no matter the level they have. But as the season goes by, uh, teams become more se more selective at the time to select which screens or which teams they want to screen with. <coughs> Did you struggle, or are you getting good results whenever the team you you are training with? No, I think that is actually like no matter how bad your roster might seem or like whatever the uh, like. Um expectations are you're always going to get like screams in the beginning lec because honestly at the beginning it doesn't really matter who you play against because it's all about like teams are just getting back into shape or they're working on like stuff that actually like most of the times doesn't matter what the enemy team does because it's all about focusing on your own and then like a few weeks in that's when it actually like starts to matter who you play against because you get punished more and more everyone gets better like it, it goes very fast like the first few uh, first few weeks uh, everyone improves at a much faster pace compared to like two months in when people start to stagnate or maybe even get worse. Uh, so no, and even then, I feel like it's not going to be an issue as long as we perform well in scrims. Uh, we should we should keep getting LEC scrims because 
you know, if we don't get them, it means that someone else is also not uh, playing an LEC team. Like, there's always academy teams and stuff, and there's a lot of good academy teams uh, in the league, which makes sense for teams to scream, because you don't give away any information about, like, picks and stuff. Um, but I'm not worried about it. Uh, like, we're, we're performing well in scrims, and, you know, we're, we're not, like, <laughs> bad at all. So, uh, I'm not worried about, about scrims, uh, just yet, at least. It's going well. How do you take personally that return into the LEC because mm, a lot of people may think, ah, okay, maybe we got a little bit tied up of these people or these or those teams who always recycle all the players who have been in LEC or in ULC as in the past, but we <coughs> prefer that Young Promises who plays on the French or Spanish or German regional league. Yeah. Why does the why do those teams take those uh, elder players? How do you feel about that? Do you do you think that there is always a a matter about the age of the of the of the players when the when the teams are looking for new players. Um, I'm not sure how much people actually look into age. Um, I think if they do, it's kind of silly. I I don't understand if you put, if if you take like a veteran who has played like for a long time, then age is gonna matter a bit, or like you can take it into consideration. I don't actually think it matters, but it's something definitely to take into consideration uh, because like it's it's pretty simple. Like the focus on like someone who's like 19, 18, or something like this can be different from someone who's like 26, 27. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's always like from person to person, right? Like I am personally like very addicted to just like playing like League of Legends, pretty much, and like the competitive side of it. Um, so I feel like nothing has really changed for me uh, by growing older. Uh, obviously, like it's different from pe per person to person, you know. Um, but I do think, in a way, that it's good to always take chances on someone who's who's newer, more un untested, or like a rookie. Uh, if you see star potential in them, you might as well give them a shot, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's just very natural, I think. I I don't think you can blame teams for for thinking that way, but I also don't think you can blame teams who are not willing to take all these gambles all the time, uh, because we have also seen in the past that it can backfire very hard, and there is upsides to getting players who has been in these situations, played in LEC before, has some experience. Uh, so you know, it's it's just preferences, I think. Mm -hmm. Is it get a is it getting harder for veterans to get their spot or uh, remain their spot on, on LEC? Because I, I remember with you talking yesterday about, for example, Odo Amne, which is a guy who, from last season's people, when the people thought he was about to leave or lost his spot, he suddenly revamped it on his level, and now he actually re uh, signed it with a new team, which is a, a, a top team like, like Rome. Yeah, an upgrade, yeah. And and for example, on the other on the other side of the coin, we remember uh, Kabochar, which is a guy who has been playing on on LEC LCS since twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen. Yeah, long and, time. Yeah. And, and suddenly he lost his spot, not because he he played a, a, a bad season, but <coughs> he didn't highlight as Odomne did. And instead of that, a guy a young promise like like Zigena took his spot. How, how do you feel yeah. from that? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think in the case in this case, I think it's pretty. It's like it's a bit luck based, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, Vitality, Vitality is an organization that has like a lot of, uh, <laughs> like they have a lot of money, mm -hmm. and I can see that they are looking to, they're looking to invest into more rookies and you know build something out of the rookies. They basically have, in my opinion, five rookies at this point. Uh, I don't really consider Comp like, I mean, he he has played one year, yeah. and that's the most on that entire roster, one year for him. But I still feel like they're very young and like a rookie team. Uh, so to me, it's kind of like makes sense if they want to, you know, toss some money on Sigenda because I know that that player was uh, very sought after in a lot of teams. Like a lot of teams wanted Sigenda for their team. Uh, so that just means that Kabushard gets like the, the short short end of the stick, you know, because uh, I definitely feel like he's still a good player and he sure. probably deserves to play in LEC. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, he was a part of Vitality. Vitality wanted to go a different direction and you can't blame them. Uh, but it's, it's unlucky for him. Uh, I don't think we will we have seen the end of Kabashard or anything. But yeah, uh, a bit RNG, like a bit luck based, I would say. And then for the case of Udo Amne, who is also like uh, one of the older players, uh, I think it says a lot that he has he has been on like a lot of struggling teams. Uh, I feel like or like he has had some struggles, some some battles, but then. He kind of like he finished like on a good, good run with Schalke, like with the miracle run. Honestly, probably like potentially saved his career because uh, they did well, and then he got another opportunity at Rogue, 
And in some ways, it's probably like the peak of his career right now. It's like one of the best teams he's been on, I think. Uh, or like the most potential. Uh, and yeah, like I said, he's a veteran player. He's he's pretty like, he's getting older and older. So I think that's very positive. I'm, I'm like happy for him. And I'm uh, like, I'm happy for all of us older guys who gets another shot because I sincerely don't believe that age is negative or like there shouldn't be any negativity around it, you know? From your, from your point of view, what's harder to get your spot in LEC for the first time or being your way back as you did? Because for example, uh, for uh, sure that, yeah. No, for example, we maybe do not see Kabochar again in, in LC, but we he's not the only example. We have Crunchyroll, we have Nemesis, who actually played <coughs> a really, I, I, I would say, a pre, at a pretty at a pretty decent level. Nemesis was on yeah. Nemesis was on world stage. Crunchyroll was one of the best ADCs on last on last spot. They didn't get the offers they wanted, so they waited for the next split to come. Do you think that there 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 is always a a revamp, a step for them to come back? Yeah, like, to answer your first question, it is so much easier to make it into LEC the first time. Because uh, if you are, like, a promising guy who hasn't had, like, a long career, and then you kind of pop up out of nowhere, people are going to give you an opportunity. Like, it's just a matter of time for most people. Like, if you show off in, like, EU Monsters or anything, you're going to get your shot. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. Because people are always going to, like, look to find something new or, like, find a new guy. Uh, so it's, like, it's not even comparable how much easier... How, how easier how much easier it is to make it to LEC the first time instead of like coming back. And the thing is that it's it's not fair against the guys who, who plays in LEC and gets like kicked out because Nemesis deserves to play in LEC, Crownshot deserves to play in LEC, Kabushar deserves to play in LEC. For sure. But then it's just a matter of who doesn't deserve to play in LEC that is there right now. Because I know like, for example, a lot of people are going to point at me and say, you don't deserve to play in LEC. But I, I don't agree with that. I deserve to play in LEC. And there's a lot of other players, or not a lot of players, but there's a few other supports that also deserve to play in LEC. But it's just like, there's not enough spots for everyone. There's only 10 spots per role. Uh, so to me, it's just like, it's really time for the league to expand because we have enough talent and enough good players to have more than just 10 teams. Um, but like, it is just like very like saddening, I guess. That is always like, people are just going to get flamed. Like, why is this guy in LEC and why is this guy not there? But it's just like, there is a world where like both both players deserve to be there, guys. There doesn't have to be like one bad guy and one good guy, or, like or like something like this, you know. So yeah, like uh, there's no doubt in my mind that especially Nemesis and Crown Shot, Shot are gonna make it back to LEC. Like no doubt for me. It's just a matter of time when. Uh, but like for example, Cabo Shot case, that's different because he has played for a long time. Maybe he's like done now. He doesn't wanna like do the grind again and you know work his way back which is like understandable as well uh, but i do think he has he has the skill to play in lc you know but yeah maybe that's where age matters you know like you know you don't know if someone has the will to fight back mm -hmm. uh just due to age you know they've done this for a long time mm -hmm. two more spots into the lc would be enough in your opinion or this is something that s s needs to be improved slowly year yeah year, yeah, yeah. As, as lpl for example does yeah, you can't just... I don't think the right way is to, like, add four slots. Because, mm -hmm. first of all, you're going to need four responsible, good organizations that can, you know... Yeah, so I feel like and one team wouldn't be enough. That's just, like, one spot for each role. Uh, I don't think it, like, adds up a lot. So, like, I feel like the natural step would be two two, two spots. And, like, straight up, that it, it is just a matter of time. Like, this is not going to stay forever. There's no way there's just going to be ten teams on LEC for, like, five years from now. Uh so I just hope it happens sooner rather than later. Because, like I said, uh, there's a lot of players who deserve to play in LEC right now. Who who are not getting their their spot, simply. We talked previously about your roster. And we have been talking about briefly about Zanzara. Maybe for the great audience, he's starting to be known since last EU Master. When uh, Ago Rogue uh, popped it off as a roster, as a, as a team. Actually, four of them, four of them, yeah, four of the five members get... He's yeah. brought into the LEC. But here in Spain, we have the chance to watch him playing on his strange, like, uh, let's call it <laughs> own style. How would you define it <laughs> as a teammate? Yeah, I think uh, Sansar is a pretty consistent jungler. Like, he has a good read on, like, pathing, which I think is super important. You have to be responsible as a jungler to not look to just only gank, 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 get kills or lose game. Uh, you need to be able to say no and, you know, do your own thing. Camps actually comes first nowadays. Uh, I think he he has this responsibility, and 
he doesn't just like, for example, he's a rookie, right? And he's playing with four veterans or whatever. But it doesn't mean that he's just going to blindly listen to whatever we say, uh, which I respect a lot. Uh, I think it's good for him to have like uh, his own opinions when it comes to, to jungling. Uh, but then he has his, like, his special champion pool, which is always going to throw people off guard, I feel like. Uh, like Fiddlesticks and Nunu, like two picks that comes to mind, you know, like people don't play these champions. Like no, no one like really plays them. Like Razor or like Razor K, like the Misfits Younger. Yeah, Razor okay. uh, Yeah, he will like, he can play like the Fiddle and stuff like this, uh, like Echo Jungle and stuff like this. Um, but yeah, like he has these cheese picks up his sleeve, which honestly teams just have to be like prepared to like get hit with. Uh, oh, well, Spanish audience, this is, this is not going to take out for surprise because we know especially the Nunu from the <laughs> so we're not getting yeah. any surprise from that. Yeah, yeah, it's more like the players because you, you don't want to play against like a Nunu, like that fucking snowball, like you're, you're just going to die to every gang. But yeah, uh, pretty much how I would round it up. Yeah, very consistent. Talking about a little bit more about the game, not just on, on about your teammates. Uh, I had the chance to talk with Treats and, and Kaiser and they both agreed that the, the support role was the one who changed the less during the preseason and with all the changes, uh, especially from the new items. Do you feel the same? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I think uh, the big, the big change in the off season was the items, and there's basically not anything new for support. Moonstone Renewer is probably the biggest change, but it's basically just like uh, a budget version of the old Ardent. Uh, it's just like a, he a healing machine item, uh, not very interactive or anything. And yeah, if they buff enchanters. It's probably going to be extremely OP, uh, but for now it's just going to be Locket and uh, the Righteous Glory item. I don't know the actual, like the actual name, like to change the name. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm like getting to all like I'm just going to call it Righteous Glory. Uh, but these engage items, so like tanks are still going to be king. Uh, tank engages uh, like Nautilus, Alistar, Set, Leona, etc. Uh, Galio, uh, but yeah. Quite an unexciting offseason, I would say, like in terms of like actual gameplay. I uh, wish it something more would have happened, a bit more changes. Um, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you uh, like, Tell yeah. Me. Go on. No, I was just gonna say like uh, things are always gonna change throughout the year. Like metas comes and goes. Like one patch from now might mm -hmm. be used to be enchanters mm -hmm. only in bot lane. But yeah, for now I don't see anything changing, mm -hmm. like soon, honestly. Do you feel comfortable about the meta? If the meta sets like we can see or, or what we can appreciate from LPL and both and LPK, yeah. which was, which can we can mainly see those uh, tank engages. We can see as well some enchanters, but uh, yeah. mainly we can see or we can appreciate some rel, some from Leona, even Nautilus, even whatever. <clears throat> All uh, the stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. To me, it's it's always going to be like if you look at competitive uh, League of Legends for the past like five years. It's always going to come back to these champions. Like the core of the game, or like the most natural to, natural way to play the game is these champions, because it's just like basically historically, they are going to be like the safest and best and like most efficient ways or best champions to play. You know, uh, so it's like it's something you're super used to. Like it, there's nothing new about playing like Alistar or something like this. Engage supports. Uh, so I think it's 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 the funniest way as well to play in a way you know mm -hmm. having like a lot of impact finding engages and stuff uh, so it's gonna yeah i'm i'm comfortable for sure mm -hmm. nothing new there so last question as you remembered was divided into two the first question is someone who in league it doesn't matter both in competitive and solo queue whatever yeah it, it there is no need to be a guy from lec it can be from whenever the league you want there is there's yep. a guy who you love to play against him because you know you give or Maybe you do not give your 100%, but the way he does the thing puts you into your big effort. There is a yeah. day when, when there is a day you you know you have to uh, lane against him, you're like, okay, I have to give my 100% because this, if I'm not, this guy is going to fuck me. Uh, I think Hilisang is very exciting to play against because he does a, like, a lot of crazy stuff. Like that guy will flash on you. Like... Uh, like so fast if he sees like even though a slight opportunity of a play and it, it backfires sometimes but it's really fun to just like it's like basically stepping into the ring and just like throwing throwing punches and then it's like you just have to like match them or like you have to like step up to the plate and match him with this place um so maybe hilisang uh uh yeah hilisang probably i mean if i'd say one because it's like a support as well so it's kind of like good. That's a good yeah you can kind of relate to him you know in a way so and yeah the second part of the question would be just the opposite of the coin. It would be which is a guy, and it does not, it does not 
it's not compulsory to be another support player from whatever yeah. the league you wanted, whenever the competition or, or solo queue, a guy you would erase from your game because every time you queue against him, every time you face him on competitive, you hate to play against him because he is a guy who is impossible to land the skill, is a guy who dodges everything, is a guy to punish bot every movement, he punishes your lane every time he, uh, he's available to. Who would that be? Uh... I mean, I feel like the, it would be like a, some superhuman who like never makes mistakes, but there is no one like that. I remember uh, you talking to me yesterday about Caps. Caps? Caps is like frustrated to play against because he <laughs> does weird and like stupid and like always, it always works out because he's so good like individually, mechanically. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's probably like Caps and like I've seen so much stuff he does in like screams, like th things you like see because you follow him daily and it's like mind blowing, like how he actually pulls it off. Uh, so I know, like some of these plays he he does, you don't want to like you don't want to you don't want to face that. So gonna give it to Captain, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> that's all. Thank you very much, Promise for your time again. And, yeah, thank uh, you. We were we were no able worries. to repeat that interview. Thank you very much. Thank for your yeah. thank for your time, and hope to have you back soon on the on the interviews. Yeah, yeah. Gracias, gracias. Thank you. De nada. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Muchos de los chicos, si os ha gustado, recordad darle un buen like, darle un buen sub, y nos vemos en la siguiente entrevista que por ti empezamos a like, vale? Hasta luego. Bye bye.